the physical processing is not taking place in your hand. It's taking place in a remote data center where the processing actually is conducted. And that is enabled through you know, the availability of very high network bandwidth. You can trigger you know, a processing in your hand and have the physical processing being done, conducted somewhere else, which means that you are purchasing as a consumer processing power you know, and bandwidth on an as-needed basis using the very popular applets. So what has started in the consumer world set its state for forth, meanwhile, also in the business world, which means storage capacity, CPU capacity, as well as networking capacity will be purchased over the network and based, driven by you know, the huge bandwidth which we have available meanwhile, it is not a problem to have processing and data being remote from the physical location. So you see business models evolving where those different dimensions of IT, processing, bandwidth, bandwidth and, and, and storage, as well as software or complete infrastructures will be purchased on an as-needed basis, thus driving flexibility of corporations and companies to a much higher extent than what was possible today. And even your industry right now is moving more and more towards service-based business models. <clears throat> so that's the third mega trend which we see actually happening, which we call you know, sell, sell, sell everything as a service. Now, if you do those kind of presentations and talk about how things are evolving, you know, you also have to look at how the value chain physically, the digital value chain has evolved. Let me give you an example on how the value chain was looking in the past. You had content providers basically where video or you know, audio content was being resold separately. You know, there were companies creating the content there were companies physically reselling the content, which were retailers, and there were companies which manufactured products to physically play the content, such as you know, a company called Sony or whatsoever. Now, that value chain you know, has changed in the past years dramatically. Meanwhile, you see service providers you know, reselling content because content is being transmittable over the network. You know, Digital rights have evolved to an extent which allows you to sell services, uh, sell content through the network. And physical devices are continue to be resold through retail or for retailers while you know, physical data content and digital content is being resold through the network. Also what happened was on the hardware side, you saw, saw increasing fragmentation you know, of the value chain. You know, you have third-party manufacturers, meanwhile, which manufacture the, the, the bulk of the IT hardware as of today. You see about industries which are more than $200 billion large, which manufacture PCs you know, and computers on behalf of the large OEMs such as Apple, Lenovo, Acer, and what have you. Now, what happens in the past years is, and that's very important for your businesses to be designed, is that there are players emerging which vertically integrate literally across the whole value chain. The most prominent example being Apple, who started you know, as a hardware manufacturer and meanwhile ended up as somebody who even provides content very successfully with the, with the iTunes platform. There are also companies which go the other way around, which is backward integration. Prominent example being Google, which started as a content provider and a service provider in the internet, and through the purchase of Motorola, meanwhile, is operating in the hardware business. Last but not least, you see content not only being provided by professional content providers, also we as consumers are more and more creating content, most prominent example here being YouTube. Now, the question is, what does all that mean, you know, the evolution 
of the digital world on one hand, you know, the growth segments on the other hand, and the constant remove and remodeling of the value chain for a company who operates in the digital world. And what I'm going to show you right now is sort of the blueprint of what Ingram Micro as a IT distributor has been using and will be using to take advantage of all those trends. Now, what our business has started with is that we started reselling you know, commodity devices, starting from PCs and the components of which a PC is being made up of, you know, networking devices, software which runs on PCs and systems, digital imaging products to capture images and print images, including the supplies necessary to, to do that. And last but not least, peripheral consumer electronic devices, which are needed basically to input data and display data you know, in a digital form. So that's what we called, and that's where we started our business, you know, our volume divisions. That volume division had to be complemented by product portfolio and vendor portfolio which make up data centers. You know, the, starting from the CPUs, the servers, storage devices, networking products, high-end networking products, make sure you vertical, verticalize your infrastructure you know, to maximize capacity utilization, make it secure, and last but not least, offer this infrastructure as an aggregator, you know, into the cloud to our resellers. So those are the two pillars, pillars which have been built in the past, you know, to run our business as an IT distributor. Now, as digital products replace, you know, analog applications more and more, we've started to create solution areas which require infrastructure products as well as you know, commodity products in the front end. The one example being unified communication. You see companies coming from the digital world such as Cisco or Microsoft competing with companies coming from the analog environment such as you know, Avire or Polycom where you know, those companies are competing in each other, with each other, which what we call an area co which we call unified communication. You see with unified communication, the, the telephone world and the voice world converging with the data world. What does that mean? You will see, for example, Outlook you know, as an um, office application running on your telephone systems where contact data gets shared between the telephone system and your computer, you will see the computer, you know, why telephoning with yourself, you know, via voice over IP, ultimately ending up also with moving uh, data, which is an application of which is video conferencing. So we've created, you know, a division which resulted from the convergence or from the replacement of the analog world to the digital world, which is meanwhile called unified communication. A second area which we've added as a business unit to those two pillars is everything which circles around mobility. You see two and a half inch devices to 10 inch devices like the tablets through mobile computers such as notebooks, all of them having to be added to enterprise networks and the related infrastructure. And that's the reason why, or that's the driver why we've created a mobility, um, a mobility division. A third division we've created is what we call data capture point of sale. We've acquired five companies which were specializing in this area. And you know, you have meanwhile devices where via GPS you can locate where the physical device is. You can scan data with the device and transmit the resulting data over the network. That allows you to conduct applications which so far in the analog world have physically not been possible. Those applications are used in retail, they're used in restaurants, they're used with logistic companies, and even Scotland Yard, an application which we've done, which we've sold uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, scans the light license plates of you know, people who do wrong parking 
and give you, send you the ticket through their ERP system straight back home, an application of data capture and point of sales devices. Oh. Next area where we've created you know, a division taking advantage of the, of the replacement of the analog world through digital products, that is called digital signage. You know, the big portion of your audience is a reflection of this industry. Now, more than 60% of digital signage applications, meanwhile, are networked, which means digital products are emerging into this industry. What we've done here is that, you know, we've started as box movers, as, you know, when physical projectors where you had foils on it were replaced by beamers, we started to sell beamers, followed by panels. Meanwhile, you know, whiteboards, which are used in the education space, and realized that in order to effectively sell those products, you require content in order to move into certain vertical markets, one of which being, you know, the example is education. So we've started to add content manufacturers and complement you know, con this content with the physical device in order to access certain vertical markets. We've also realized that in order to successfully sell those devices, we need our networking divisions and add networking products in order to remotely control you know, the content through the panels, followed by mounting devices which allow you to hook up the various panels on walls or whatever means of physical connections. Last but not least, we realized that offering services, installation services for those solutions as a distributor is a high demand requirement of specialized you know, retailers uh, or resellers, AV resellers, which we're focusing more and more on conceptualizing you know, ideas and actually selling solutions rather than doing you know, the hardware close services. You see, this is an example how we've taken advantage of the move from the analog products to digital products and how we moved away from a pure pick, pack and ship uh, distributor to a value-added distributor selling complete solutions into various shape or markets. <clears throat> last but not least, and I'm doing pretty quick on this, the last area we've added is around physical security. I mentioned that already. Also, physical security moved from analog to digital, and it requires from capturing the, the images to storing the images. Meanwhile, so-called network-attached storage devices which you hook up to the cameras, and you can live even without computers and install complete solutions. Now, what we've realized when adding you know, those individual components and building blocks, which are based on the two pillars, infrastructure as well as commodity devices, that more and more those product-oriented solutions have to be sold into certain vertical markets. And the way we've selected, we became pretty selective with vertical markets, was driven based on exponential growth areas, which are in certain vertical markets uh, where you see higher growth than in others. Let me give you three examples of that. The area of energy you know, is a very prominent one. What you see increasingly happening is through the through the increased sensitivity of our population on energy consumption and the resulting demand in renewable energies, there is a big need to bring energy production, which happens in a decentralized fashion as opposed to centralized energy production, and consumption to the smallest possible grid, which is what we call smart grid. Now, in order to control production and consumption, you need computers and IT technology to do that in a smart way. And actually, if you talk about home automation, which is a pretty en voc term right now, you will see increased household penetration happening not through you know, life and entertainment type of products. 
you will see digital, you know, digitalization in our home and home automation predominantly driven and enabled through smart grid type of applications where you try to synchronize basically your own power production with your own consumption using intelligent meters, using intelligent data loggers, NIT type of devices. So that's an area where we already foresee you know, exponential growth rates you know, for digital products um, going forward. The second area is education. Now, physical, you know, digital signage type of products are actually finding themselves a lot in education type of environments. The whiteboard products being very prominent examples of that. <clears throat> so, what we are doing is we have created a division which just focuses, you know, on education markets going through resellers we actually focus on schools, universities, and so on and so forth, retrieving products from our portfolio which are standard, complemented with products which are dedicated to the education market. A company like Apple just has announced that it will support you know, digitalization of education content and actually move into this market big time, an eight billion dollar market just in the United States is the, is the education market for, you know, um, um, analog, analog education products. Last but not least, we've added an area called healthcare. You see more and more products being digitalized in hospitals, as I already mentioned. You know, X-ray type of products, which so far have been analog because of the high frequency requirements and the reliability, there are meanwhile manufacturers such as NEC, NEC, who are manufacturing panels which you can use, you know, in medical environments for X-ray display. So that is the third area where we've moved into a digital market. So what I, or in, into a vertical, vertical market here. So what Ingram Micro has been doing and that's what I try to illustrate here, is to move away from a commodity box moving player by adding you know, data center products and selling them as, even as a service, and then more and more you know, moving into solution type of businesses complemented by certain vertical markets. So we do that today with hundreds of manufacturers and traditionally selling through IT resellers, through thousands of IT resellers. Now by building up this blueprint for digital growth, you know, which I was just alluding to, we've been adding thousands and thousands of resellers which come from the analog world such as AV resellers for digital signage, such as electricians for energy consumption products or physical security, which they are used to, uh, used to in, in install, or even unified communication type of products, and PBX resellers, companies which so far have installed analog telephone systems, which are more and more getting digitalized, and those helping those companies to move into a digital world, for example, in this unified communication. So by this means, we you know, not only have helped our IT resellers to emerge and enter those new two markets, we also have helped you know, analog resellers of whatever shape and form, the most conservative ones probably being at, you know, electricians, to evolve you know, into this new world of digitalization, replacing analog products. Now, if you look what kind of competencies are required in order to get this evolution conducted. So far, we've been playing with IT, IT vendors, you know, distributing the products through IT resellers. Today and tomorrow, we're even adding content providers, you know, to our, to our, to our vendor network and addressing analog resellers and also more and more 
ISVs. As more and more value creation is sitting in the software and in the, con physic in the, in the, in the physical content, you know, traditionally we've received our sales leads from our resellers directly. More and more we receive sales le leads from people who do the physical programming, who create the, the software solutions, and they refer us to projects you know, which are implemented by systems integrators going on, it's going, going, going on. Now, what you see happening is that by this quickly evolving value chain, it is literally impossible, you know, that you can keep and generate and maintain, you know, physical, um, digital competencies in your own shop and being up to date all the time. So more and more, and we see that trend happening, in particular in the United States, where we've built a network of competences of resellers, you need to network with players, you know, which complement your, 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 uh, your knowledge in order to drive, to drive solutions. And what we also see happening is you look at the value chain, more and more the individual components of the value chain in the digital world are getting commodity. But it's what's, and so the individual components of solutions are getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. While at the same point of time, the solutions add in complexity. So, so what you see happening where the margin is actually generated, it is not in the hardware anymore as soon as products get digital. It is more and more in the systems integration, you know, um, systems integration capacity and skill set. So the margin potential in the value chain is shifting away from the individual components of solutions more and more, you know, towards systems integration capabilities where you need to network, you know, with different shapes of competencies in order to be up to date with the ever-changing, you know, competence profile required. So as a summary of that, you know, oh, let me just talk a little bit about my company first <laughs> before I go into the summary here. So, you know, this is what Ingram Micro, you know, has actually built. And meanwhile, this company, you know, is of a size of 40 billion US dollars, being one of the Fortune 100 companies on this planet. And, you know, we're distributing our revenue streams pretty equally across, you know, four continents, with about half of the business being conducted in the United States, 30% of the business in Europe, 20% business in, in Asia Pacific, you know, and about 5% of the business, you know, in, in Latin America. So what this company has actually evolved is, as I said, from a pure box mover to a solution provider and following, you know, the digitalization of this world, which meanwhile have left computers. So the question is, where is that all going? And number one, what I tried to get across as a message today was, you know, you can be assured that driven by Gordon Moore's law, literally every analog application over time will get replaced by digital applications. Number two, ubiquity of, of products where products get instant on, or at least in very low latency connected to the network, combined with the data bandwidths available, you will see, you know, data and processing happening remote from the locations, which means ultimately, you know, our whole industry will move towards an as service or towards a service model, which has substantial, you know, consequences for us all having so far, you know, provided uh, physical products and software around. Number three, you know, every device will be networked. It will be identified, you know, either things or people will be identified by RFID and it will be trackable, you know, by GPS type of networks. So you will see literally every single device um, um, being, being networked. And number four, to maintain competencies of this digital world in order to sell, you know, effectively solutions, you can't do that alone anymore. 
You need to be part of a network of resellers and distributors and vendors you know, in order to resell to enterprises or to consumers you know, more or less complex and network solutions. So this is basically what I tried to get across today to you, to this audience, is that the world shifting rather quickly. You've seen how, with the example of Apple or the other example of Google, how quickly you know, people can replace other people's offerings. So you know, the, to, to close this presentation today before we move into, uh, into questions, you know, build your networks, don't build your competencies alone, you know, and collaborate basically between the analog world and the digital world, being prepared the more and more you know, your, your analog world gets replaced by digital, gets commoditized, and, you know, and, um, and so on and so forth. So with this, you know, I'd like to close and open the audience for questions. <laughs> I'll be the first victim. <laughs> uh, the great presentation, by the way. I had no idea you were so um, so diversified and had a great great blueprint. Um, but it also kind of um, uh, raises a, uh, an issue, perhaps, in my mind. As all this stuff continues, we s maybe we're more and more vulnerable to disruptions. What happens when we pull the plug on all this? Uh, vulnerable to disruptions in, in natural or unnatural disruptions to the network. I mean. I'm not sure whether I can answer that, 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 that question of the right person to answer this question, but what you've seen through the continuous optimization of supply chain in this world just very recently, you know, the IT industry has optimized itself you know, to, to an extreme. It has optimized the supply chain to an extreme. As a result of that, people move to locations where it's very cheap to manufacture products. You know, the market has been consolidating as a result of standards, which I understand in your world don't exist to this extent right now. And what happened about, you know, Q4 last year was a flood in Thailand has actually flooded, you know, the whole industry of capacity generating, which is the hard disk industry. Now, what I've tried to, to, to tell you today is the fragmentation of the value chain also happened in this industry. And it resulted that you know, the, the physical engines to drive hard disks, as well as you know, the, the, the readers of the hard disks, there's 70% of the worldwide production manufacturing capacity happens to be in Thailand. And also 70% of the hard drive industry happens to be in Thailand. Now, they happen to be a couple of meters underneath of the sea, right? which was not the cause that you know, everything was flooded. It was a different cause. But when that flood actually happened, 70% of the worldwide drive capacity has been wiped out in a single day, right? which means the whole computer industry right now is only right now, six months after the event, or four months after the event, starting to recover unto a full recovery you know, of the overall supply chain, which will last until September this year. So you see, actually, the vulnerability of you know, our digital world, you know, it, with this as an example, you know, has been pretty high. A second area of vulnerability is certainly the issue of security. You know, are power plants secure of hackers? You know, are railways secure of hackers and hacking attacks? Um, I'm not too sure. There's a whole industry focusing on security. Thank God that very large accidents have not yet happened, but uh, we're not prevented for that. <clears throat> Could talk about that for hours. <clears throat> Hi, uh, Richard Barnes from Cleverdis. Uh, just a, a question uh, 
more towards the, the consumer electronics side of thing, uh, things because, uh, as you said, we, we're seeing this uh, convergence of, uh, of AV and, and IT, particularly in the home. Um, are you looking perhaps towards working with more uh, retailers and supporting them uh, in distribution as well? Yes, we do, and we already are reselling to a large extent consumer electronic devices. And if you compare a PC and its components today and a TV set and its components today, you know, the, 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 the display is of the same technology. In each, in each TV set, you will have a CPU coming from Intel or from ARM or AMD or whosoever. You will have connectivity being the same. You will move towards touch and gesture rec recognition as a means of inputs and interaction. So the fundamental technologies are the same. What has not yet converged are the channels. Right? But I'm sure that as this technology is more and more commoditizing and its usage is more and more convergence, convergent, also channels will be converging over time. Not yet, ha has not yet happened big time. You still see separate streams of you know, sales forces from you know, consumer electronic vendors selling into same retailers, but purchased from different individuals at the retailers than the whole IT industry. But you know, you're right. Technology will drive convergence also in the channels there. So. One more question, and then I think we come to a close. Now, I thank you for your patience for listening to me here for more, almost an hour, and I'd like to wish you a very successful fair here. It was very exciting for me as a part of the IT industry to talk to the AV industry here this evening. Have a great evening, and thanks for listening. <clears throat>